So I think with a slight delay, uh, it's time that we start this uh, joint workshop uh, from two European projects, Infinitec and AAA. Both of them um, are working on um, uh, digital finance risk assessment and energy efficient uh, investments. So there is certainly some common area of those two projects. And this is what we will be exploring today. Uh, so without further ado, I'll give the floor to two of the leading figures in this project. Um, Hara Caracosta from NTUA and AAA project and Ernesto Troiano from uh, Infinitech. So please, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, take the time. Let's, let's start with Hara. Take the time to introduce yourselves and, uh, and your projects, and then we can follow our agenda with the more detailed presentations in the panel. Uh, Hara, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome also from my side. Uh, I'm Hara Karakosta. I'm from the Decision Support Systems Laboratory of the National Technical University of Athens. And uh, I look uh, with my colleagues, uh, Mrs. Katarina Papapostolio and Philip Maxis. And Mr. Philip Maxis, we are uh, representing today the Horizon 2020 Project tri uh, AAA. But our institute, uh, the National Technical University of Athens, has it also the pleasure of coordinating. Um, first of all, and also on behalf of uh, AAA Project, project uh, let me thank you all for the attendance and of uh, the, and, uh, of the invitation. Um, uh, but a special thanks belongs to the Infinitech project that for the kind invitation and proposing uh, also this idea uh, for organizing this uh, joint event and uh, also for the, all the strong uh, coordination and efforts uh, that brings us all uh, here today and hear more about this very interesting um, topic and discuss uh, about risk assessment techniques promoting uh, sustainable investments. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Um, let me say that the focus uh, of today's discussion is, key, uh, is a key issue for AAA. Uh, indeed, energy efficiency investments um, are subject to various uh, risks and uncertainties, which may affect the involved actors' profitability. Um, and as such, there is a need for developing uh, tools to support the decisions. So far, um, the developed uh, uh, methodological frameworks uh, that aim at projecting uh, the profitability and risk uh, of such investments present a high complexity, a high technical complexity, and uh, involved actors um, have difficulties in uh, digesting these results. Um, here's the gap that uh, AAA fills in. And of course, you will hear more details about that later on from my colleagues, uh, Katarina Mapostolu and uh, Philip Maxis. Um, I'm sure that we will accelerate the exchange of ideas and find common ground with the Infinitech and uh, also scaling up uh, good practices. Um, I wish you all a very successful webinar. Thank you very much. So I guess the floor is back yes, to John or Ernesto. Or, Ernesto. No, or me, so without undue. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for, first of all, of the invitation uh, uh, and for the opportunity to share our experiences uh, within uh, those two projects. Well, I, I really believe that the Federation of a European Project uh, as a great value. Uh, John and me were organizing other cluster and they make absolutely sense. So to share information, to share uh, the achievement, to share what we know and what other knows. It, it, also for the commission, this has a great value. So again, thank you for the invitation. I think that this opportunity is really important for the starting. You know, it's not an end, it's, a, it's just a starting within these two projects. Uh, um, besides that, uh, I'm Ernesto Troiano as a John. Uh, said uh, that uh, I am managing the Infinitech project. Well, uh, actually, the Infinitech project uh, is a lighthouse, a big, uh, uh, big uh, also investment from the European Commission, uh, specifically for the uh, for the financial sector. Uh, one of the few uh, projects that uh, is focused on the financial and insurance sector because they. Actually, they were hide from the from the radar of the of the other program in the past. So it was a, a, a very important just just because uh, 
we put uh, the emphasis on big data and, and analytics uh, uh, with, uh, on specific use cases that uh, involves the financial sector, like, uh, uh, like uh, personal portfolios, investment, where the risk uh, assessment is key. So today we will hear more about that uh, uh, from uh, our, our partners and colleagues, uh, from Richard, John, and others. So uh, again, I thank you for the application. Without further ado, I will uh, ask uh, to start the video uh, unless there are other uh, introduction. Uh, so I can present uh, the video uh, uh, that shows the uh, topics of the uh, Infinitech project. Please go, thanks. I don't know what... Uh, happens about the audio the financial sector is historically conservative and therefore resistant to digital transformation despite the rising investments in innovation financial institutions still face many challenges to keep up embracing the digital transformation is only one of the problems the continuously evolving regulatory environment privacy protection policies and the emergence of new types of fraud raise barriers to change making it hard to benefit fully from the latest technologies. But it's really hard to gather such a huge amount of data from so many fragmented sources. By leveraging and sharing their data, banks, fintechs, and financial institutions could create more effective digital services and personalize them around the customer. They could prevent frauds, make services more accessible, and improve their decision-making. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a unified solution that helped the financial sector to gather data and really go forward with the digital transformation process? <clears throat> well, of course there is. Infinitech is already operational, resolving problems for over two years now. We provide cutting edge big data, AI and blockchain technology for digital finance, coupled with complementary assets like trainings, innovative processes, and regulatory compliance building blocks. Infinitech is a large scale flagship project with 46 partners coming from 16 different countries. We test 16 different pilots with many more use cases, and we have a total budget of 21 million euros. Didn't you forget something? Yes, my colleague John will tell you more about the business aspect of Infinitech. Our solutions enable banks and fintechs to offer highly personalized products to their customers. For example, we use big data to create personalized asset management recommendations for retail customers. The recommendations are automated, yet explainable and trustworthy. This enables banks to offer high quality wealth management services to customers with relatively smaller portfolios and low appetite for risk. Overall, Infinitech improves the competitiveness of banks, financial institutions and fintechs while making artificial intelligence services more accessible to European citizens. This lowers the barriers for European citizens to access high quality digital management services. This sounds great, but can someone explain how it works? That would be me. AI services developed in the project enable advanced analytical capabilities such as incremental and declarative real-time analytics. Infinitech provides a seamless data management layer that allows AI to combine data coming from heterogeneous and diverse sources, having both operational and analytical datasets, allowing for integrating processes over static and streaming data. This in combination with the semantic interoperability engine of Infinitech, allow AI developers to explore a whole new path and create a new generation of services for Fintech. The microservices-based reference architecture of Infinitech enables the agile creation of workflows in a bespoke pipeline to build innovative applications, optimizing costs, and reutilizing the already developed building blocks of the project. Infinitech interacts frequently with the European digital finance communities and association. For example, GFT as Infinitech coordinator, together with other partners of the consortium, created and now lead the task force Big Data and AI for the financial sector, carrying on several activities, such as the publication of a white paper. Infinitech 
is recently publishing an open access book on its research and innovation activities. It has developed a marketplace to share assets and components, and as well as the so-called VDIH, providing trainings and innovation services. Keep up to date with our latest news. Subscribe to our newsletter, attend our workshop, follow us on our social media. We really appreciate your feedback. All right, so uh, here follows the credits uh, and some bloopers, uh, but uh, uh, I think that uh, is enough. That was a, a much more explainable that I can tell you, but a few things I would uh, like to add, if I may. Uh, is, okay, so I will share my screen just for a few, a uh, few more slides. Okay, but uh, uh, is the second one and share. So uh, I don't know what I'm sharing right now. Mm, the usual. Uh, do you see my screen? <laughs> and <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So uh, what I want to tell you uh, first, uh, a few things, few few uh, things about the, the project. Uh, how big it is uh, is a, a huge investment from the Commission. A huge investment also from the, from the partners. We are forty eight, not forty six. Uh, the number has changed over time, but uh, uh, but uh, this is a, a really a, a, a lighthouse project also for the Commission, specifically for the for this industry, which, uh, as the video explained, has some kind of a, uh, let's say resilience to the to the innovation, but it definitely it needs. So uh, the project is big data and analytics and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, trendy technologies, IoT, blockchains. So, uh, Infinitech, as the name, uh, as an infinitum almost of uh, uh, of uh, components, uh, from technologies to business uh, uh, motivation uh, drivers, and so on and so forth. But the key thing is that uh, we put uh, the project not in some development, but in mostly in demonstrator. And most of the demonstrator, I will show you later on, uh, regards. Uh, specifically the financial sector, uh, whether risk assessment, uh, the assessment of any kind of uh, data involved with uh, personal portfolios, uh, uh, cyber crimes, uh, transaction, whatever is key. That's why we develop components. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the presentation is not moving at all, but uh, uh, we develop component, we develop technologies, we develop me methodologies uh, uh, to address all this problem. And this are, is our, uh, our most important achievement. Besides, uh, uh, we create a marketplace where the things can be hosted. Uh, we create uh, uh, a virtual uh, innovation digital hub where the uh, other provider with a community can find a solution uh, for, for their needs. So um, Infinity is, is everything. I want just to show you how big is a, uh, the, the, the project with the partners from uh, research uh, um, centers, academia, universities, uh, to, of course, uh, vendors. But at the center, there are banks, uh, central banks, uh, finance, financial and insurance institutions, uh, and fintech uh, and uh, insurance tech uh, companies. So the project uh, uh, brings all these values, all these uh, experiences and, comp and, and competencies uh, uh, to uh, create uh, what we call the Infinitech way. The Infinitech way is a set of, if you want, methodologies, technologies, uh, assets, uh, uh, way to develop uh, on testbed to create uh, uh, to create uh, the uh, sandboxes for the pilot and demonstrator. So this is a uh, key. Uh, I'm, I'm really going through uh, very quickly. This is key to the project and, uh, and we can share some kind of achievement with other projects, also to understand where they, uh, where they, what they achieved, uh, where are they uh, heading to in order to converge to some common goal. So uh, with uh, any further ado, uh, I will uh, just invite you to visit our marketplace, to invite you to visit uh, the, of course, the website, but especially the, the resources that we bring uh, out uh, um, for the communities, uh, especially in the fintech uh, arena. So it's all from my side. Uh, 
I will leave uh, the floor uh, to uh, my colleagues that they will explain in details what they have done, what they have achieved, uh, what are the uh, scientific and technical approach to solve the, uh, the um, well, many problems, in particular the risk assessment uh, uh, topic. Thank you for uh, the, your attention. Again, uh, thank you for the occasion to speak about the Infinite Technology. Back to you. Thank you, Ernesto. So maybe it's uh, time we go to Richard, uh, University of Glasgow. Richard, feel free to introduce yourself and uh, tell us how you uh, develop personalized uh, risk assessment models using machine learning in Infinitech for investments. Richard, the floor. Okay. Uh, okay, can whoever is sharing their screen stop sharing and then I will- Yes, yes. There go. Um, okay, can everyone see my screen okay? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Um, so thanks for the introduction. Um, so as I said, I'm Richard McCready from the University of Glasgow. Um, and we've been working in the Infinitech project on personalized investment technologies. So effectively what this is about is trying to be able to make um, investment opportunities for people to invest in their future available to everyone rather than only um, sort of high um, paid um, investment uh, people. So let me start by just giving, um, just setting the scene um, for uh, this particular um, talk. So if we think about Europe and sort of Western nations more generally, we have a series of problems that are becoming more apparent. So effectively, um, a lot of our populace are not saving enough for their future, which is going to cause downstream problems for us as a nation. Um, or nations um, moving forward when they reach retirement. So just to give you some stats from the UK, um, about 35% of the UK adult population say they don't have a pension and about 43% admit they don't know how much they'll need for retirement. And one of the ways that we can try and solve this problem is to get those people or provide the tools for those people to invest in their future. However, there are a range of barriers that are currently stopping your members of the general public from being able to invest in financial markets. Um, whether this is just the complexity that's involved here, which is not helped by the amount of jargon in the finance domain, um, making it difficult for them to understand what they're investing in and also the consequences of their investments. There is challenges in terms of just learning, in terms of time spent to understand financial markets. It's difficult to quote for them to quantify risk with regard to investments, um, as well as the different types of risks. And as we are moving into much broader markets, I mean, today you can invest from anything from bonds all the way to cryptocurrencies, then it's very difficult to decide for a customer what they should invest in. And as more of a spotlight is being placed on the financial marketplace and the amount of money there, um, there is a large number of different people that are providing potentially suspect financial advice. And so it's an open question of, well, who can you actually trust? And so given these barriers, we can't really expect a member of the general public to be able to become an, a savvy investor on their own, right? Um, and so in an ideal world, we would want to be able to provide everyone their own financial advisor who could analyze their position and recommend financial assets that they could then invest in. In that way, we, the financial advisor is responsible for min minimizing the risk for the customer by identifying profitable assets for them to invest in that's going to meet their risk profile or appetite. But this just simply isn't scalable. Um, expert financial advisor time is limited and expensive. Um, and particular financial advisors may not be general. They may only in, you know, specialize in particular markets. Which leads us into innovations in the space of artificial intelligence powered investment recommendation systems, or as they're sometimes referred to, robo-advisors. So robo-advisors are not new. Um, they were first actually devised around about 13 years ago, um, but they're becoming increasingly common as a tool for managing large amounts of wealth in our modern marketplaces. So what these are is these are simply computer programs that analyze market data 
and potentially customer data, and then provide recommendations for things for the customer might invest in. Um, this might be you opening up your app and it going and saying, you know, here's some, um, some investment opportunities for you today, or it might be a more automated system, which is applying rules to perform the trades automatically, um, where the customer is effectively just passing control to the computer program. However, many of these um, uh, platforms or these robo-advisors are actually relatively primitive in terms of the technologies that they're using. Many of them are rule-based. Um, however, what we've been seeing over the last few years is a slow transitioning into more intelligent systems that are backed by machine learning. Um, for those of you who are not um, who don't have a background in this space, when I'm talking about machine learning, I'm actually talking about the broader topic of you know, teaching a computer how to go and do a task that would normally be done by humans, where this is typically done through example. Um, so effectively, you give the computer an example of you know, a potential trade in this case, and then the computer tries and values that particular trade, and you know, then it can feed back how well it did based on whether it made money or not. Um, this you know, machine learning has been around for over 70 years. Machine learning in the finance space has existed for about 20 years. However, what makes this particularly interesting is significant innovations have been made over the last five years, um, which are really starting to push forward the technology in the finance space. So I'm just going to note three sort of major innovations. There are some others that are important, but these are kind of the major ones. First of all, the development of new um, uh, neural network technologies backed by GPU compute has enabled us to massively increase model complexity. Um, and what this does is it enables us to model much more complex applications effectively, such that we can take financial applications and integrate much more detailed data just more beyond simple um, market technical indicators. There's also been significant movement in the natural language understanding space, which has really pushed forward technologies like search or other um, related systems. For example, if you use um, a conversational assistant like an Amazon Echo or those kind of technologies, that's all being driven by these kind of innovations. And that kind of technology can be adapted for the financial domain to better understand news and social media data. And finally, we've also seen um, barriers to using these technologies for SMEs being lowered by the development and then open release of large neural networks that are pre-trained on a range of tasks, which allow um, people to not just start from scratch. They start from an existing model and then they can adapt it for their own particular application. So this kind of AI revolution is really kind of opening the doors for new technologies. And so what we've been doing in terms of InfiniTech is looking at how we can use these technologies to try and uh, you know, improve um, these kind of AI-based financial assistance. We do this um, through uh, asset recommendation. That's the way we formulate this as a task. So recommendation technologies, I think a lot of us will be familiar with them if they don't actually know how they work. Um, so for example, if you ever go to like Netflix and it recommends you movies, it's the same type of underlying technology. The idea is it takes in three types of information. So it takes in information about your items. In a Netflix case, that would be your movies. Um, and it represents those somehow. You, it takes in information about the user. So in the movie case, the person that's wanting to have movies recommended to them. So that might be their past history. It might have some um, information about what they're currently looking for. And then it takes in some information about the world state. So that might be in the movie example, um, you know, how popular are movies globally? If we adapt this kind of paradigm to the financial space, then it becomes a bit more complicated. Um, the items that we're trying to represent are financial assets. So these might be stocks, shares, commodities, other types of financial trading um, items. Um, and we can represent these in different ways. So we might represent those using classical technical indicators based on market data, but we can also use some of these more advanced AI-based technologies to um, represent those in terms of maybe sentiment analyzed from um, news sources, technical reports, um, social media, these different kind of additional sources that give the sort of broader public view on these assets. From the customer perspective, we can represent that customer based on previous investments that they've made, also potentially their liquidity based on 
past transaction history, for example, if we have their banking details. We might also give them a questionnaire so that we can collect information about them and their situation. So get information about their risk preference or their investment horizon. How long are they planning to invest for? This type of information that can help us customize the recommendations for that particular customer. World state in this case is things about the market as a whole. So are particular segments of the market doing well or are they doing badly, as well as other external factors that may be influencing the overall market. So for example, are we going through a financial crash? What is the effect that COVID is happening? These types of things, which can influence entire segments of the market. And then these different features can be then passed into a machine learning model and it can try and learn patterns that help link financial assets to customers based on how profitable those custom, those assets are and how um, well they match the risk profile and um, other you know, customized factors about that particular customer. Um, so this is just definition of the task. I'll just quickly go over that, it's just what I said. Um, so what we've been doing in Infinitech is we've been developing um, you know, different AI-based models for this for a range of different stock markets and um, tasks. So this is just some sample data to illustrate how, you know, how this can work. Um, this is from the Greek stock market that we were working with the National Bank of Greece. Um, so this is a model that we trained from 2018 to 2019 and tested on 2020 um, for about 1,000 financial assets from the Greek stock market and about 52,000 customers where we had past financial transactions for some of those and also um, asset investments for some of those customers. And as you can see, these models can be quite effective, right? We can get you know, annualized return between you know, 20 to 35% on average for different assets in this particular year. Now, you're not gonna get that for every year because of course, return is dependent on your uh, the effect or the, the actual growth in the market overall, as well as you know, how effective past history is at predicting the future. But it kind of illustrates that the value add that these kind of models can bring for improving returns and minimizing risk on investment. So I'll stop there because um, I've got limited time um, and we'll talk a bit more about this maybe and some of the advantages and risks of these systems um, in the panel. But if you're interested in going off and trying some of these technologies, as um, Ernesto mentioned, in Infinitech, we have a marketplace um, where we put up um, different technologies, either paid or for free, where you can go and um, try out some of these technologies yourself. Um, so you can go to marketplace.infinitech-h2020.eu and if you're interested in trying out some of the financial asset recommendation technologies we built, then we provided um, full tutorials for those um, online, which you can work through yourselves. Um, you can get at, you know, you can directly launch these in Google Colab. I provided a, a link here for you. You don't need to take a snapshot for this or go off now. Um, I'll make sure we share the slides around later so you can go and access those. Please stay for a panel. Um, but if you're interested in trying some of these technologies out, that information is there. And with that, I will pass over. Of course, you are you are free to ask uh, questions, right? To Richard and the, the speakers yep. any time. Uh, we are a little bit of time, so maybe we can continue with uh, with George to, to talk about real time risk assessment. And of course, we we invite everybody to subscribe to. Uh, in fintech marketplace and find information there and just to say that AAA is the first project to put some of their assets uh, there and uh, we thank AAA very much for this. Uh, George? Yes, yeah, so if you wish to go and ask questions, please do so in the chat or um, you could save your questions for the panel. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Opaturos from Innovax. Uh, and in this presentation, we will discuss and demonstrate technologies and models in order to provide real-time risk assessment in investment banking. These technologies have been uh, developed by Innovax and JRC Capital Management in the context of Pilot 2 of the Infintech project. Uh, the motivation for this pilot lies in the fact that uh, there are still many traders and portfolio managers who lack accurate risk information in real time. This is due to the practice to update risk calculation of a portfolio once on, only once a day, usually overnight in a batch mode, 
which of course is not appropriate for trading environments like, for instance, high frequency trading. Uh, this is the case for many banks, even more for smaller asset and fund management firms. When the risk evaluation is done by a third party as a service uh, that is in charge of monitoring the compliance of portfolio managers with agreed investment guidelines and also is possible for the risk controlling. Such companies usually offer a real-time overview of positions on the accounts, but with respect uh, to risk measures and other indicators, they only update their uh, estimations once a day. Also, from the perspective of the Financial Institute as a whole, the risk exposure from intraday price fluctuation is not uh, monitored properly, which may lead to trading or investment inefficiencies. Traditionally, there is a trade-off between speed and accuracy uh, for this type of risk evaluation. There are fast methods of calculation, but these are usually not as reliable as the computationally more com complex ones. And finally, close risk monitoring is also a regulatory requirement that can be supported significantly if the information is available in real time. The pilot for the risk assessment purpose implements two standard risk measures, value at risk and expected shortfall. VAR, VAR is a measure of the risk of loss for investments. Specifically, it estimates the maximum loss of a set of investments within a given probability and time horizon, typically a day. Expected shortfall, which is also called uh, conditional value at risk. It's a measure whose uh, calculation is based on VAR, but while value at risk gives only a threshold for the losses, expected shortfall gives a concrete value. These metrics have many uses in finance, not only within um, risk management, but also in other fields, in financial control, financial reporting, in and in computing regulatory capital, which is the amount of assets that a, a bank a, or a, an investment company needs in order to cover a, potential losses. Additionally, the pilot a, introduces a novel VAR, mod a, VAR model, the so-called deep VAR, which is based on deep a, neural networks and is able to offer more robust a, risk assessments than the classic uh, VAR methods. Another feature is based on the what-if scenarios uh, and focuses on pre-trade risk assessment. Uh, this means that if a trader sees an opportunity for a trade, he may enter this uh, trade into the system and request a calculation of the risk uh, with this new trade added to the portfolio as if it were done already. Uh, the what-if scenario is uh, very useful for traders in order to understand how a potential new trading position may affect their portfolio and its risk. And the last, uh, the last feature is the sentiment analysis, uh, meaning that the pilot takes into account uh, not only price data, but also additional data sources like text and news data, from which it performs uh, sentiment analysis in order to generate real-time uh, alarms um, uh, about, for instance, a sudden change in market conditions. All these features uh, are applied in real time, uncovering the risk which possibly were unknown, and enable close control uh, of the given portfolios. Uh, the real-time monitoring enables quickest reactions and gives the possibility to make uh, adjustments uh, to the portfolio if needed. In the next slides, uh, we elaborate uh, on the deep VAR and the sentiment analysis models. Uh, okay, deep VAR is based on uh, the deep AR algorithm, which utilizes recurrent neural networks to produce probabilistic forecasts in the form of Monte Carlo samples. Uh, the produced samples 
are used to compute consistent uh, VAR estimates in a certain prediction horizon. Uh, also, this algorithm can be fed simultaneously with several um, similar time series, enabling cross-learning between them, which make it ideal for this use case. Uh, DeepVar was developed by Amazon and can, has been applied successfully in several business sectors, such as in the retail sector, predicting uh, the number of sales per product or in industry estimating electricity demand. However, these cases follow a classical machine learning pipeline where the model is trained once and for several hours in a large data set. On the other hand, DeepVar implements a continuous learning approach where the model is retrained on the latest market data, addressing the dynamic nature of uh, financial markets while avoiding at the same time model bias, serial correlation between VAR estimation and clustered uh, VAR breaches. To achieve that, we fine tune it to enable model training in a timely manner, less than 30 seconds, uh, that makes it applicable even for intraday VAR estimations. In our experiments, uh, deep VAR outperformed all the standard uh, VAR models, producing valid VAR estimates even in periods of high volatility in the markets, such as at the start of COVID pandemic. And also a scientific paper presenting all these techni technical details into the evaluation project uh, that we followed um, um, has accepted for publication by Springer Digital Finance Journal and will be published very soon open source. Um, moving to the sentiment analysis feature, the pilot uh, uses a state-of-the-art pre-trained AI model named Finbert, uh, which is a natural language processing model to analyze sentiment of financial text. It is built by further training uh, Google's BERT language model in the finance domain using a large financial corpus and thereby fine-tuning it for financial sentiment um, and pilot, uh, the pilot leveraging transfer learning uses Finbert out of the box without uh, further evaluation. However, special attention was paid on the pre-processing of the input data, uh, while the implementation follows a human in the loop approach. Uh, to this end, the user is able to review the input text and the predicted sentiment through the pilot's user interface. In the next uh, two slides, uh, we will discuss how we achieve real-time availability of the provided uh, risk indicators. Regarding the portfolio var estimation, instead of calculating the var of its uh, given portfolio, uh, whose uh, structure may change very often, we initially calculate VAR at asset level for all the assets of interest. Deep VAR is fed with the various uh, time series um, um, in parallel. Um, and uh, we training, uh, and this uh, has minimal effect in, in the inference time. Uh, after this step, the estimated distribution of each asset is available and the um, asset level var is obtained by taking the quantile that correspond to the given confidence probability. Then, based on the input uh, portfolio weights uh, on each asset and the time horizon of var, only a matrix uh, multiplication to obtain the covariance of the used asset is required to obtain portfolio var. Therefore, the overall process is quite time efficient. It is repeated every minute, taking into account the latest available data. Um, however, delivering um, the utilization of uh, the latest data is a challenging, challenging task. For instance, Forex market prices are updated at inconsistent high frequency. Uh, while even small price fluctuation may have a significant impact on portfolios, 
due to aggressive investment strategies. For this reason, uh, the application incorporates two important innovations that have been incorporated into the Linux scale database that is provided by Infinitech. First, uh, the data store allows ingesting data at very high rates and performing analytics on the same data set without having uh, to migrate historical data in data warehouse using periodic batch processes. And secondly, uh, its uh, online aggregate feature enables efficient execution of the required uh, aggregated aggregation operations using a declarative way with standardless SQL well, uh, statements. This improves the response time in orders of magnitude. Uh, additionally, an interface between the data provider, uh, for example, the bank and the data store is required to handle the real-time data streams that are rejected uh, to the system. As these components need to communicate asynchronously, ensuring high availability and flow, full tolerance, the most popular intermediate is the use of data queues. Infintech, Infintech also provides uh, the Kafka data queue, while the Linux scale database has a built-in Kafka connector, which enables the interconnection and the automating the storage of the input data. Uh, so maybe, maybe we can uh, speed up a little bit because we are lagging behind in time. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm finishing. Okay, th this is uh, how the whole system is deployed using the FinTech way with a microservices approach. And uh, I can go directly to the demo. After the users log into the pilot's user interface and select one of their portfolios, they are informed about several statistics regarding the instruments of his portfolio. As you can see, there is a Pearson correlation plot, a density plot, and at the bottom a price plot. Note that all these figures are dynamic, while the number of the utilized historical data is adjustable. In the analysis and back testing page, the app user can see how the available VAR models performed. VAR is predicted using all the three standard methods, variance covariance, historical simulation, and Monte Carlo, as well as with a deep VAR model. In addition, a parametric model calculating the expected shortfall is provided. These predictions are updated every minute based on the latest available market and trade data. The green line is the actual portfolio returns depicted against the estimated VAR models. The dense lines are for 95% confidence probability, while the dashed lines are for 99%. As you can see from the historical performance of each model, deep VAR adapts to the volatility of the true portfolio returns enabling significantly fewer VAR breaches than the rest models. At the bottom can be seen the latest trading position. The third page of the user interface provides the real-time VAR predictions of the given portfolio. The user can select the time horizon, the confidence level, and the utilized risk model in order to see the risk of his position according to the latest input data. The plot at the bottom illustrates the deep VAR model predicting the 15-minute value at risk for the next hour as an intraday risk estimation. Note that the time horizon and the prediction window of DeepVar can be adjusted according to the user's trading strategy. The sentiment analysis page depicts the market sentiment of the traded assets. Here, we retrieve relevant tweets in real time through the Twitter API, process them, and predict their sentiment with the FinBert model. The users can examine the percentage of tweets per sentiment category over different time granularities. Filtering the illustrated data per asset type is also available. It is mentioned that the system leveraging a microservices architecture can be fed with text from different data sources. The last page of the application is for the pre-trade analysis. The user can adjust several parameters and experiment with several different positions on the assets of his portfolio. In this way, he is able to understand how a potential trading position can affect the risk of his portfolio. Okay, this is 
the end of the demo. Uh, I also like to remind you that uh, all these uh, assets are available in the fintech marketplace along with training materials and videos. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. And uh, yes, we were a little bit um, out of time. So let's go straight to AAA. Uh, Hara, Katarina, Philip. Yes, John, thank you very much. Um, let me share my screen. So I will start with uh, a brief presentation of the project objectives and uh, contribution, and then my colleague Philip will um, demonstrate live, live um, the toolbox. Um, um, I think that now you can see my screen. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank you all for, uh, for the participation. I would like to thank also uh, Infinite, uh, uh, Infinite uh, partners for, uh, for the collaboration and the organization of um, today's webinar. Uh, as I have already said, I will uh, br briefly present um, our project, the AAA project, uh, which um, has been uh, has developed uh, in order to to assist investors and policymakers to choose um, profitable solutions and uh, uh, energy efficiency projects. Um, we, we have developed a methodology and uh, a toolbox that um, secure uh, such investments and could, uh, uh, that could meet their uh, financial commitments. Uh, so uh, some facts and general information about uh, the project. The full title of the project is Enhancing at an Early Stage the Investment Value Chain of Energy Efficiency Projects. The project uh, initiated in September 2019 under the support of European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. Uh, it has a duration of 33 months, and uh, finally, it ends on the 31st of May 2022. Um, the overall uh, budget is around uh, one, uh, one and a half million euro, and uh, uh, consists of a consortium uh, with uh, 12 uh, members uh, that includes financing bodies such as Aben Ambro, JRC, Pyrrhus Bank, uh, Vipa, and uh, Dev from uh, Bulgaria, uh, project developers uh, such as uh, the Spanish Criara and uh, Seven from Czech Republic, uh, policy support institutes from, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, ICP and Adelphi, uh, as well as um, researchers and um, academic institutes such as uh, National Technical University of Athens, and uh, University of uh, Piraeus. The coordinator of uh, the project is the Decision Support Systems Laboratory of uh, NTUA, uh, which is a leading research institute in the area of management and decision support for uh, energy and uh, climate um, sectors. Um, and uh, the scope of, uh, of our project um, is to um, to support energy efficiency investments and cover the energy efficiency gap, uh, despite the existence of many investments uh, with great prospects and uh, potential at the development phase. Uh, as you know, only a few of them um, finally achieved to get financed. Uh, the main factors uh, that hinder the, the financing of such investments are, uh, for instance, lack of evidence of the performance of uh, such projects, uh, the lack of standardized uh, procedures um, and standards, um, the underestimation of, uh, of the benefits that uh, these projects uh, have, and uh, the lack of knowledge and uh, expertise. So in AAA, we're trying to, to, to close these gaps to, um, uh, to have uh, investors uh, to, to have a common language for investors and, uh, and project developers. And in order to address uh, these challenges, um, we aim at identifying and promote um, 
promoting bankable and sustainable investments, the so-called AAA investments, which uh, are investments with a strong capacity to meet their uh, commitments uh, from the early stages of a project uh, generation. Uh, the question that we try to answer um, is uh, how uh, we can mainstream uh, energy efficiency investments. So uh, the AAA methodology and the, the tools uh, try to offer a standardized process uh, for the identification, assessment and benchmarking of um, project ideas to support bankers, funds and uh, financing institutions in finding a, a profitable uh, solutions. Uh, we are examining mainly projects from, um, from our eight AAA case study countries. Uh, which are strategically selected to promote diversity uh, across a number of, of factors. Uh, these countries are Bulgaria, Czech Republic, uh, Germany, Greece, Italy, Lithuania, the Netherlands, and, um, and Spain. Uh, and to, to boost uh, the financing of, uh, of the projects, um, several strategies, financing strategies um, have been explored, such as green loans, uh, green mortgages, green bonds, and energy efficiency auctions. Uh, while a portfolio of energy efficiency projects um, uh, that better match with, with the needs of, of uh, financing institutions uh, has been also developed. A uh, key aspect of, uh, of our approach is uh, also the stakeholder engagement. We try to engage key actors um, from several target groups uh, in order to, to enable development, implementation, and testing of uh, our methodology and, um, and tools. Uh, and um, more particularly regarding uh, our case studies, um, the approach that we have uh, developed is implemented in, uh, in these eight case study countries, uh, which have different uh, backgrounds, different characteristics in terms of uh, regulatory issues in terms of uh, energy environment and uh, economic and financial background. Um, several actions have been implemented in order to, to, to engage the stakeholders, uh, the national stakeholders from these um, countries. For instance, we have uh, uh, organized capacity building webinars um, in order to cover topics such as uh, EU taxonomy regulation, risks and mitigation strategies, uh, to assess potential future investments uh, and uh, instruments that could uh, maximize uh, the potential of, uh, of the projects. We have also recently organized um, regional training workshops in uh, each one of these countries in order to, to demonstrate our tools to, to practical test uh, the, the, the three tools and uh, our database in order to to gather feedback and uh, from our stakeholders and discuss uh, their uh, further exploitation with them. Uh, of course, bilateral meetings uh, with our advisory board members and uh, our national um, contacts uh, have been realized in order to, uh, to, to, to test the tools to, to gather input and uh, knowledge from uh, their experience and update our uh, methodology. And, uh, and approach. And finally, um, we're currently preparing synthesis paper for its case study with targeted recommendations on, on the policy framework and the market uh, architecture across these countries and of course ac across uh, all over Europe. Um, now, as I have already said, a key pillar of our approach is, um, is stakeholder engagement. AAA relies on its target groups, uh, which are key actors to enable the, the exploitation of our innovative uh, scheme for energy efficiency financing. Uh, since stakeholder engagement is becoming a, 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 an essential component to, to enlighten the gap of uh, the, sub, uh, the senior support processes, uh, we have um, developed a concrete uh, engagement approach uh, in order to involve highly relevant stakeholder, stakeholders. Uh, so the figure uh, presents uh, in the slide presents the, the target groups that we have uh, identified throughout the project. Well, the table shows um, the implemented activities, consult stakeholder consultation activities, uh, along with their impact for the different uh, stakeholder types. 
the stakeholders' involvement has facilitated us in, um, in better implementing our uh, AAA actions through input on the identification of the risks that hinder the implementation of uh, energy efficiency investments, uh, through prioritizing the, the risks uh, and giving weights in our criteria for the risk assessment. Uh, they have reviewed our uh, technical reports and uh, provide, feed, provide feedback. Um, they have participated in our events, workshops. Um, uh, they have signed signed up and tested the, the tools and database. Uh, and uh, one of the most important aspects is that, that they have provided real energy efficiency project ideas in order to compile our uh, pipeline um, of projects that uh, were uh, then assessed and benchmarked through our tools. Um, the, the AAA approach uh, is a practical result-oriented approach that tries to answer uh, in three questions to assess uh, the financing instruments and risks at an early stage, uh, to agree on investments that um, can be considered as AAA investments that uh, meet, uh, meet their commitments and have a good performance in uh, several KPIs, and um, assign the identified AAA investments with um, the financial schemes that we are uh, examining. Um, so through this approach, we, we promote investments that uh, have strong capacity to meet their commitments. Uh, we have identified AAA investments and um, we have tried to reduce time and effort that is required um, at this crucial phase of uh, the investment conceptualization. Well, uh, we try to make the investment more attractive uh, for invest investors and uh, financiers in order to, to get finance, finally. Uh, here uh, in this slide, you can see the three AAA tools, the assess, the agree, and the, the assign tool. Um, the AAA tools assess energy efficiency investments towards five sectors of uh, activities, uh, namely buildings, manufacturing, transport, district heating, uh, district energy networks, uh, and outdoor, uh, outdoor lighting. And uh, more uh, particularly, the first tool, the agreed tool, evaluates the maturity of uh, the proposed uh, energy efficiency project ideas that have been inserted in uh, the tool and uh, executes uh, the risk assessment. Uh, while it also checks the compliance of the projects with the eligible technical screening criteria of the EU taxonomy. Uh, the second tool, uh, the agreed tool, uh, performs the benchmarking of the investment ideas based on financial risk and sustainable development goals uh, indicators. Uh, it uses a multi-criteria decision analysis method, the electric method, in order to classify the the inserted projects um, into three categories, uh, the AAA, uh, the reserved and the rejected uh, ones. Um, as you can understand, the AAA projects are, uh, let's say uh, the best projects, uh, the projects that, that meet the, the criteria that have high uh, values in the KPIs uh, and um, good performance in uh, all the, the important criteria. Um, and in the case that the project has poor performance in the KPIs, it will be marked as rejected by the AAA tools. Uh, of course, tips and methods are also provided in order to increase uh, the performance of the um, candidate projects through our, uh, our tools. And uh, finally, the third tool, the assigned tool, is a multidimensional platform. It, it has several um, uh, different pages. Uh, for uh, investors for, uh, and for, uh, uh, for uh, project developers uh, with, uh, different, uh, with different functionalities. Uh, and um, the stakeholders, uh, the users can send requests for green loans, green mortgages, green bonds, and uh, energy efficiency auctions. Uh, they can um, matchmaking, uh, they promote the matchmaking uh, between bankable projects and financing schemes. Uh, well, this, uh, this tool um, promotes the, the pathways in order to achieve the, finally the project uh, delivery. 
uh, through this tool, uh, financing, commun uh, financing institutes and um, project developers can uh, come into contact and, um, uh, and aggregate projects or, uh, or agree on the, the best uh, financing instruments. Um, now, the, the second, let's say, uh, part of our toolbox is um, the AAA database on energy efficiency financing that incorporates data and uh, functionalities that enable the effective and interactive communication of the AAA methodology result results. Uh, the data included in the database refer to, of course, today AAA case study countries. Well, we're exploring to expand this data for the, uh, the rest of EU uh, countries. The content is being updated, of course, on a regular basis because uh, the data also sometimes come from global databases. So we have to, to update them regularly. Uh, the KPIs uh, reported have emerged uh, by a bottom-up procedure. We have incorporated also input from stakeholder consultation uh, from uh, surveys that we have uh, conducted. And uh, in brief, the data that uh, are um, in the database contain critical aspects of energy efficiency financing, such as um, implementation of risks, uh, the risk mitigation strategies, uh, preferences of um, investors on, um, on energy efficiency projects, financial performance of um, successfully implemented uh, projects, uh, models and instruments uh, for uh, financing of the projects, and also um, the performance of the countries in terms of uh, SDG indexes. Uh, finally, to sum up, um, AAA offers important tools uh, that could support uh, both project developers and um, and financiers to enhance the and, um, and give confidence to, to those target groups uh, in order to, to boost the, the financing of energy efficiency projects. It tries to close, uh, to close the gap um, between these two stakeholder uh, groups. Uh, we uh, provide rating system along with benchmarks and KPIs in order to assess uh, the projects and identify the most profitable ones at an early stage. Uh, well, we facilitate the matchmaking process with uh, financing schemes. Uh, finally, uh, through targeted recommendations that are currently prepared, where uh, we will promote the European priorities and uh, policy actions on leveraging uh, private uh, funding. And here are some facts and figures regarding our uh, our achievements, our successful uh, achievements. Um, indicatively, we have uh, almost 200 project entries in the tools, um, uh, several uh, downloads of uh, the country reports uh, from, uh, from the database. Uh, we have identified more than uh, 700 stakeholders, uh, while almost 140 of them have been actively engaged. Uh, more than 157 stakeholders uh, have signed up and tested the, our tools. We have created synergies with 53 uh, relevant uh, EU projects, uh, several questionnaires uh, that uh, have fit our tools and, uh, and the result of, the, of which have fit the, the tools and uh, the database. Uh, of course, uh, several outputs in terms of uh, publications, scientific publications, um, articles and uh, blogs in websites, newsletters and press re releases, both uh, from our site, from the AAA site, site, as well as references to AAA in the newsletters from our partners and uh, our synergy projects. Um, and in order to, to promote um, our uh, our results and activities. We have participated on, in almost 80 workshops. Uh, we have uh, jointly organized activities with all, uh, almost 30 activities. We have uh, jointly organized almost 30 activities with um, relevant uh, projects. And finally, uh, um, we have prepared and um, published the material, online material, the communication material. Uh, for um, making uh, available our results to, to general public, such as banners, the plates, and QR codes that 
but are also available in our website and uh, social media. Uh, I would like to, to invite all to explore our tools, to visit and explore our, our tools, to sign up and, um, and explore the functionalities, uh, test the tools and uh, get back to us for, uh, for more information and uh, comments, of course, for, update, for updates. Um, thank you all. You can find us in social media. And um, recently we have made uh, also post for our um, final conference, final European Roadshow. Um, the registration link is available. I would like to invite you all to participate and, um, and see our results and findings and uh, further recommendations uh, that have been emerged from, uh, from this journey, uh, the AAA journey. Um, I think that uh, Philip, uh, now you can uh, you can go on with the live uh, demonstration. Hello to all from me. Hello, Katerina. Uh, I will share my screen. I guess you all can see my screen now. Yes. So. Um, so my colleague uh, Katerina has uh, introduced the AAA tools um, very efficiently, but I would like to add uh, a few more comments uh, regarding the risk assessment that is being performed by the tools, although the risk assessment is just a fraction of the capabilities uh, that the tools provide to energy efficiency stakeholders. Um, uh, here we have a, a general diagram of uh, the three tools. Uh, we have the assess tool, the agreed tool, and the assign tool. These are uh, homonymous to, to, the main, um, to the main methodology uh, to the main methodology of the AAA uh, project. So the assess tool. Um, uh, estimates the risk of the energy efficiency projects that are uh, in included um, in the platform. And also it provides an uh, EU taxonomy compliance uh, in order to check whether the project is compliant or not with the upcoming European taxonomy. Uh, then the, the user receives the, these results and he proceeds to the agreed tool in which uh, the project is being benchmarked based on specific key performance indicators, economic key performance indicators, sustainability indicators, and the risk that it has been calculated uh, in the previous uh, step. And the projects are classified into three main classes. And then we have the assign tool, which is a, a multidimensional platform, which uh, um, connects project developers and their projects with the possible financing schemes. Regarding the risk assessment, uh, I would like to, to present you the main categories uh, that we have uh, identified in the AAA methodology. And on these categories, the, the risk assessment is, uh, of the tools uh, is based. We have the financial category, which is related to the credit worthiness of the borrower. The behavioral risk category, which consists of the rebound effect, and it is expressed as a ratio of the loss benefit compared to the expected environmental benefit when holding the consumption constant. Also, we have the energy market and the regulatory risk, which reflects the uncertainty about energy prices and affects the decision to undertake uh, the energy efficiency investment. We have the economic risk, which is a, it differentiates from the financial risk. The economic risk uh, is monitored by the interest uh, rates uh, and their vol volatility factor. Uh, it reflects fluctuations in energy rates, which may lead to an unexpected cost of capital, which derives from changes in the cost of debt of the borrower, preventing the accurate estimation of the energy savings of the project. And finally, we have the technological planning and operational risks, which considers the maturity of the technology, the construction, the operation and the maintenance, um, and also the, cap the capacity to predict the energy savings accurately. So the tools uh, can be found uh, by scanning uh, this QR code presented on the screen or, uh, by, or by clicking on the links. I will show you right away uh, a small video 
which uh, presents all the functionalities of the AAA tools. Let me just share my sound, the system sound. Okay. This is a short demonstration can video. Can you hear the sound of my system, of the video? Yes, yes, we Okay. Of the AAA standardized tools. The AAA standardized tools is the key element to pave the way for identifying and financing AAA energy efficiency investments and materialize the AAA approach. The tools can be accessed at aaa-h2020.eu slash tools. The standardized toolbox consists of three distinct tools, namely assess, agree, and assign. The ASSESS tool evaluates the risks and the maturity of energy efficiency investments and also checks whether they comply with the European taxonomy. The AGREE tool benchmarks the investment ideas based on financial risk and sustainable development goal indicators. And finally, the ASSIGN tool is a multidimensional platform that connects project developers with investors. Within the platform, Requests for green loans, mortgages, and green bonds can be by investors for the already benchmarked projects of the previous tools. The user at first should register or log in if already registered. The tools can be accessed by clicking on the logos or on the links on the top of the page. Once clicked, the user lands to the home page of each tool where a short description of the tool's functionalities lies and also links can be found to related documentation and user manuals. In order to proceed, the user has to declare that agrees that the project data and contact information submitted will be saved to the AAA tools database and will be also accessible by other users. By clicking Get Started, the user lands to the first step of the Assess tool where project's initial information is required. The countries that the standardized AAA tools cover are Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Germany, Greece, Italy, Lithuania, Spain and the Netherlands. The ASSESS tool evaluates projects in the following sectors, the building sector, the manufacturing sector, the transportation sector, the district energy network sector, and the outdoor lightning sector. Each sector consists of distinct project subsectors and project categories that have to be selected by the user based on the project that is being assessed. The next step is the EU taxonomy compliance, the assess tool based on the sector and the project category provides the technical screening criteria and the user has to declare whether the project is taxonomy compliant or not. Following 11 project risk assessment questions are provided to the user, which have to be replied in order to proceed to the next step. By clicking Submit, the user is redirected to the results page of the Assess tool. On this page, the user gets notified of the risk that has been calculated per each AAA project category, along with the total aggregated project risk. Note that the risk values presented are calculated on a scale from 0 to 100%. At this point, the user can proceed to the Agree tool by clicking on the respective button or on the Agree tools link on the top of the page. In the Agree tools homepage, users have to consent to the project data processing in order to proceed to the Agree Tools project benchmarking and evaluation. The first step consists of the insertion of the energy efficiency projects, financial and technical parameters to the system, such as the total investment cost, the annual operating cost, energy savings in electricity, natural gas or other fuels, and the expected reduction of CO2 emissions. In the next step, the benchmarking parameters are defined. The benchmarking procedure takes into account four key performance indicators, two financial-related indicators, one risk indicator, 
and one indicator that's related to the multi-benefits of the energy efficiency projects. The available indicators is the net present value, the discounted payback period, and the eternal rate of return. The user is also able to define the weights of importance for each indicator by the drop-down lists. The weights can vary from very high to very low. When clicking Submit, the benchmarking results are presented along with the key performance indicators calculated. The benchmarking result can vary between AAA, reserved, and rejected. For more information on the benchmarking classes, you may find links to the respective documentation in the description. From this point, the user can proceed to the Assign tool by clicking on the respective button or on the Assigns tool link on the top of the page. The AAA Assign tool is a multidimensional platform consisting of numerous interfaces according to the different types of beneficiaries and energy efficiency financing instruments. Financing bodies are available to see the projects of the database by clicking Find Projects. In this table, investors can view the inserted project from other users along with the respective information and the indicators calculated for each project in the previous tools. The users can change the sorting of the table by clicking on each column name. When clicking on a project name, the user is directed to a page in which can send a financing proposal for the selected project. The proposal in this step could be a green loan or a green mortgage. In order to proceed, additional financial information of the proposal have to be entered. Back to the Assigns Tool homepage, the user can also aggregate projects and notify project developers to cooperate and issue a green bond. Investors can select projects of their preference from the projects table and define green bonds parameters in order to send a request to project developers of the selected project. Also, from the main Assigns Tools page, investors can find submitted green bonds to the system. The table includes all the green bonds that have been submitted along with the respective information. Users can view the projects that are included in the green bond and also view issuers' contact info. The last functionality of the Assigns Tool interface for investors is the information page of the submitted financing proposals. Project Developer's interface includes two main functionalities. The first is the financing proposals, in which a table of the financing proposals submitted by investors are listed, along with the respective information. By clicking on the proposal ID, the project developer can view more information on the financing proposal and also investors' contact information. Back to the project developer's interface of the assigned tool, users can also view the requests for green bonds that have been placed by investors. By clicking on the green bond name, the project developer can view all the other projects that are requested to be included in the green bond. And by clicking on the issuer's name, the project developer can view issuer's contact information. From the My Project link on the top of the page, project developers and investors can view the projects that they have submitted in the tool and by clicking on the project name, users can view the analytic breakdown of the selected projects. From the Profile page, users can enrich their profile with analytic information of their company or financing institution in order to become more attractive to investors and project developers. This can lead to a more efficient matchmaking of project financing proposals and requests. This has been a short demonstration of the AAA Tools functionalities. More information on the AAA Tools or news and updates of the AAA project can be found in the AAA Projects website and in Projects social media accounts in Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. So this has, this has been a short demonstration regarding the AAA tools. So we can now proceed to the next presentation.
Very interesting film. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you very much. You don't uh, just a question, right? I think I think we can okay. move then. The next thing is the panel, right? So the uh, indicators and also the parameters for the green bond, all these um, are based on rules, right? Uh, about what parameters you have to include, what data you have to compute and so on, right? So there is no statistical processing, right? Now I'm thinking in terms of Infinitech, like uh, machine learning and so on, or it's, or it's all based on rules, right? There are, there are uh, very well regulated and based on rules. Can you answer this? Uh, the tool does not calculate the parameters of a green bond because this is uh, it has to do with the underwriting procedure between mm -hmm. project developers and investors. So the tool facilitates uh, the insertion of a green bond, which has been previously issued based on the okay. findings of the tool, uh, in order for, for other investors to buy this bond or to invest with this bond. So we don't calculate the parameters. The parameters are being set uh, by the regulation. Yes, from the issues. Okay. Okay, but in principle, uh, you know, in the in the underwriting process, you could use statistical methods, right? Like you do yes, with of other course. Other finance instruments. Okay, I'm yes. going to save this for the panel. So I think that now it's time for the panel. You know, we can, I think we've seen very interesting things. We can have a free discussion. And I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Alice Korovesi to open her camera, Managing Director at uh, INZEB. And she's an expert in uh, energy efficiency projects and financing, especially in buildings. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Nicolas Kakoyanis, mm -hmm. General Manager uh, uh, from uh, Resnovae. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kaspar De, uh, De Kiski, Managing Partner at Energy. So maybe you can just open your cameras. And also, yes, uh, my colleague, uh, Richard McCready. Uh, so having shared all this and before, you know, asking you a couple of questions, I'd like to give you the floor, but you know, you can really, because we are a little bit um, uh, lagging behind, if you can really be quick introducing yourselves what you do and uh, what is your, you know, an opening statement about uh, the risk assessment work we've seen so far. So maybe we start with uh, Ms. Koropesi. The floor is yours. Please introduce yourself. Yes. What you do and, and a viewpoint on what you've seen uh, today. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for the invitation, uh, both you, uh, Mr. Solagos, and of course, Caracara Costa and the AAA team. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, among um, refugees and um, experts in the domain here in the discussion. So what we do at INSEP, we are a non-profit organization working since 2014, based in Athens, Greece, and uh, addressing both the technical parts of buildings, energy efficiency in buildings, and the building environment. And in addition, the second axle of our organization works towards uh, the social aspects of energy, and this comes to the mitigation of energy poverty, um, energy communities, energy democracy, uh, energy uh, justice. And in addition, we are working towards energy efficiency financing, not from the technical core technical part, but from uh, the part of the policy recommendations and uh, developing strategies uh, in collaboration with other organizations. Um, as part of our work is the SMAFIN project, it's the continuation of the Sustainable Energy Investment Forums, which is uh, coordinated by CRES. It's the Center for uh, Renewable Energy Sources and Savings. And um, along with Bulgaria, Romania, and Croatia, we are now trying to uh, develop policy recommendations on how to increase private financing for um, increasing energy efficiency rates in uh, these four uh, countries. Um, so far, um, I'm impressed of the work that has been done um, in your project. Uh, I'm also impressed about the AAA, even though I'm close to the AAA project, so I know the developments, but as a general statement, what I can say is that 
we need such kind of tools in order to support governments, public authorities, and anyone who is working in the field to increase the confidence in um, uh, investing in energy efficiency projects. Uh, because yes, energy efficiency should be become and should be the number one priority in the EU and the member states. Uh, but okay, I think that I will stop now as a short introduction to give the floor to the others as well, and I'm available for any other question that you might have. Thank you, Alice, for being uh, short and to the point. Uh, Mr. Kakoyanis. Hi, hello. Thank you for the invitation. It's always, it is always a great pleasure to participate in a AAA event. Uh, I think you are very innovative. You are on the, on the ripple of uh, all the ESG, sustainability, taxonomy, evolution. Uh, now, as regards uh, me and my company, uh, we are a startup on sustainability services, on ESG services. We are a member of the Elevate Greece Registry, and we have developed a uh, cloud-based, AI-based uh, ESG evaluation uh, platform. So we, we, we use uh, AI on document processing, on document recognition, and on data recognition to go and get all the critical uh, data and all the critical information from uh, uh, companies uh, and entities, uh, documents, uh, fiscal and HR, their uh, software in-house, uh, HR and logistics and all this. We gather all this in an automated way. We, we use RPA, robotic process automation, uh, system and all this we have developed a, a specific uh, methodology to evaluate uh, the ESG uh, rate of a, a company. So uh, ESG Genius is the name of the platform. Uh, we think that uh, we are also uh, innovative and we have imported and AI and robotic uh, process automation in order to uh, minimize the human interference and make our result as more punctual and uh, not uh, greenwashing uh, as it can be. So this is in a high level, uh, our work on uh, the, uh, sustainability and AI, and I am at your disposal for more details and whatever. Thank you, Nikos. I'll keep this in mind to ask you, you know, about, you know, how you we can use RP, RPA, right? And AI in, uh, yes, yes. in um, you know, in gathering information, automating information. But now I'll take, I don't know if uh, Mr. Uh, Dexiki is uh, joining us. I'm not sure. Hello, I'm Philippos Mexis. Uh, Mr. Chaba uh, informed me that he had uh, an issue and he, uh, he had to leave. Okay. And he sent me an email uh, with the recommendations uh, regarding energy efficiency and funding energy efficiency. And he told me whether I could uh, read these okay. recommendations okay. Uh, on his let's behalf. Do, let's do that later, Philip. maybe in the okay, end. Okay, okay. I'd, okay. I'd like to, yes, to give the, the, the floor to Richard. Uh, actually, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and what you do. <laughs> but I've got a question, right? I mean, the question here is... Uh, because we heard, uh, you know, also uh, uh, Nikos talking previously about uh, AI and machine learning for the ECG investments. So what are really, you know, um, the benefits, right, in using uh, machine learning? Is it about automation? Is it about, uh, you know, intelligence? Is it about uh, speed? Is it about uh, saving costs, uh, reducing errors? And if you see, you know, all any dark side, right? Also on uh, on using AI, maybe the bias, maybe uh, you know the, the trustworthiness and the reliability part of it. So please, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself again, but yeah, let's, okay. uh, let's open this discussion. And I think Nikos will make some points, especially if he's uh, using this already uh, later. Okay, so I'll, I'll just quickly just reintroduce myself. So yeah, so I'm Richard McCready. Um, so I'm a lecturer at the University of Glasgow. 
Um, within Glasgow, we are largely a machine learning um, focused group targeting um, next generation technologies for effectively information finding. So how can we take digitized information and then extract knowledge from that that can be used for members of the public? In the finance space, this is very much about saying, like, what can we draw from, you know, statistical financial data, but also from the large amounts of public text and other documentation that we can find on the web about financial companies and use that to make the technologies that are supporting current investments smarter and more aware of what they're actually recommending to you such that we can reduce risks and better personalize those technologies for the end user. Um, so, John, you asked about um, ECGs. Um, so let me kind of talk a wee bit around that topic. So um, one of the problems that we have with machine learning technologies right now is that they're very much focused on what I would call the technical indicators, right? So they're looking at these financial streams and they are trying to decide, okay, how profitable is this thing? And that is their main driver. And so they're not socially aware of the things that they are actually providing to the user. All they care about is that number, right? At the other end. So is this going to make me 20% profit? Is it going to make me 10% profit? And so just to give an example, since I very quickly just pulled this up. So if I showed you this graph, so this is a this is a fine, you know, profitability graph for this particular uh, company, which I've had the name for. And um, the green line is the amount of money that this or the the value of the stock for this particular company. If I just look at this from a technical indicator perspective, then you might look at this and say, well, this is a good thing to invest in. But what if I told you that this is a defense company, and the reason that they're that they are being so profitable is because they're profiting off Ukraine. Is that a socially reasonable investment to take now? And so this is one of these aspects where if we are wanting to factor in you know, other factors beyond just how profitable it is, we need our machine learning algorithms to more deeply understand what it is that these companies represent and then what our customers, so the people that are actually making those investments care about is socially sustainable investing, something they care about, right? If you're then looking at it from a company perspective, if you recall the sort of overview of like asset recommendation that I gave, one of the things that I talked to you a bit about was how some of the data that we want to integrate into these models is information about the world. So this is information about marketing conditions, but it's also broader. So one of the opportunities that these kinds of next generation deep learning models allow us to do is they allow us to capture more complex information about the things that we are investing in. So if you're looking at this from the perspective, it's not just about looking at technical indicators, but it might also be things like, let's build a knowledge graph about a company. So we can start to detect the relationships between maybe the different board members, their backgrounds, the different decisions that they've made. And then we can embed that to give our, you know, effectively a green or sociable, sustainable, or you know, quality metric to not only the company's performance, but but also the people that are actually working at that company or driving decisions about that company. And so these more complex models enable us to integrate this different type of evidence such that we can make them smarter and more um, useful for us in terms of being able to make decisions which are not just useful for making money, but also for being sustainable longer term. Um, I could also talk about challenges, but maybe I want to, maybe I'll let other people come in before okay. I talk about the dark side of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we can uh, revisit this later. I think that's the reason, um, Richard and everybody, why we see in the literature also new metrics emerging, right? Earlier on, Philippe uh, talked about MPV and uh, ROI, return on investment. So, for example, in different industrial sectors, we have the social. Uh, ROI, which tries to augment, to augment the traditional technical uh, parameter with uh, the ever important social aspects, which in some contexts 
like ESG, it has um, a significant. So I'm going to move, you know, the reverse order uh, uh, now to Nikos and then, then to Alice. And uh, yeah, of course, I, I'd like to, to, to have the comments of, um, uh, of Nikos on what has been sent for, for the social aspect. But I've got also, you know, um, some curiosity because you mentioned, right, it was not really planned, the, the robotic process automation. Is this, is this really, uh, you know, uh, AI, is this, it's, I know it's, it's called robotic, right? Or it is just, you know, about automating a series of steps you know, for gathering information in, in the system, right? So it's not it's not really, at least at this stage, artificial intelligence or machine learning, right? It's just a matter of automating some steps on gathering the information, as you said, from different systems, marketing, HR, or documents, um, and so on. So if you if you want, yeah, I mean, feel free to to comment on uh, you know on Richard's uh, position. But also, if you if you try to give us some some insights on this RPA question, I'll be I'll be grateful. Nice. Uh, we are lucky because uh, uh, we, we implement all this in real life. Uh, so uh, let me let me separate the cinco is the two levels. What I mean, RPA it is uh, how can say it copies. Uh, structured operations, processes that you teach the uh, the RPA system. Uh, there are, uh, in, in, uh, it is, a, a, nowadays it is a mature technology. Two, three years ago, I would say it was non mature, but now there are some uh, significant uh, worldwide uh, uh, providers, uh, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, uh, and many others. Uh, we are familiar, uh, we use uh, basically Automation Anywhere and UiPath, depending on the budget of the client. Automation Anywhere is uh, IBM much more also cheaper. IBM and yes, Apple. yes, okay, yes. There are about uh, a 10 reliable uh, companies at this, uh, this uh, moment. Uh, at this point, you are right, we do not have AI. When I, I teach a, a, struct, a process, uh, it just repeat all this process. Uh, I gain resources, I gain reliability, I gain uh, velocity, I gain time. But uh, the AI feature, uh, we use AI in two, in, two, in two points. The first of all, in a recognition documents. For example, when you upload a document in, on our uh, platform, uh, I don't care, uh, I don't take into account how you will name your document, but uh, the, the platform uh, has, has been taught to recognize what document it is and where, and where is the critical information that goes, wants to extract. Uh, in our metrics, you have seen that we have about 92% of uh, reliability, but the good thing is when the, it's not uh, sure that 90% uh, that it has the right, uh, it has the, it has recognized the data he's looking for. Uh, he, he puts apart uh, the document, red flag, and calls for the human uh, eye to check uh, the document. But 92%, it is a high percentage, and uh, it's going higher uh, as long as you use it. But uh, returning to RPA, uh, what, we are, what these companies offer now, the software vendors offer us now, is that after uh, there are some modules that they monitor processes of the, the employees, uh, they, can, they evaluate the time and uh, the effort of uh, the users, and they suggest what they can go to replicate and uh, optimize. So uh, in a smooth way and in a, a step by step uh, procedure, uh, we try to enter AI also in RPA uh, process. Uh, it's not an easy uh, procedure and why? What is our uh, basic uh, barrier? 
is that uh, we have a small amount of data, a small amount of processes. Uh, but uh, also in our ESG rating, for example, we use AI uh, when, when we develop an action plan to improve your A ESG rating. We go one, one year after and we reevaluate your new ESG rating, uh, judging, taking into account the action plan that the platform suggested, which of these steps uh, were implement, implemented or and were not ignored. And then we try to, to feedback and teach the algorithm which step was efficient and which step was not efficient uh, but also there the big barrier is data that's why like, like uh, some process process mining right to find yes the, exactly the, process the, mining <laughs> yes so you are, uh, you are saying that uh, rpa is standard now is a uh, rule based but ai is coming right uh, yes rpa is commodity rate. A commodity for us and for the majority of the RPA developers is commodity. AI on RPA is coming, but it's coming very quickly because we have the uh, all the needed weapons to do it. Thank you very much, Nikos. Now I'm going to turn to Alice and I'm going to move, you know, the discussion a little bit to uh, to policy. And you know, I'd like to capitalize at least on your, you know, uh, energy. You know, from from the general landscape of energy efficient investments, right? And, um, what are the policy uh, challenges? So let's move, you know, the discussion a little bit to the to the policy aspect because we can see the, the policy aspect of AI later as well. So please, Alice. Okay, yes, please, uh, John, if you can repeat the first part of the question, because there was an interruption and you were frozen for a bit. Maybe, so maybe, I don't maybe. know, it was my problem or uh, yours. Uh, maybe, maybe it was my problem. So okay. I was saying that um, uh, what is really special about uh, of energy buildings, right? And what is, you know, the the policy challenge and the regulatory. John, challenge. John, we lost you again. We I lost think you that again, especially the first part. Yes. It's something like that uh, the universe doesn't want to, to, to address the first part of the question. I don't know. Let me try once again. I, don't try change, vice versa. I, don't I heard the second one about the policy part, so let's do it vice versa. <laughs> Yeah, okay, the, the, the first part was what is special about investments in uh, about the energy efficient investments that concern concern buildings, right? So okay. that's, uh, that was the first part of the question. Now with, with my camera off, I hope you, you were able yeah, to- Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, and then it's about the policy part and how this can be, let's yes. say, um, addressed in any case. Yes, um, whatever has to do with the building specifically, I think that it's not so much different from any other investments that we're doing in other parts. I mean, infrastructure probably, um, uh, or let's say to the SMEs as a general. Um, there are the, the, the risks, are let's say somehow uh, common. Uh, of course, they are differently approached by the financiers and the banks. Uh, definitely when it has to do with the buildings and the development of new buildings or let's say renovation of the buildings, it's uh, definitely the credit risk, which is uh, the main part that needs to be concerned. And this definitely relates to a borrower not repaying a loan, lease or a third party investor. And credit risk uh, is typically considered as a financing risk. So therefore, financial institute or institutions should uh, be ready to deal with such cases uh, in advance. That's why the, the tools that you have presented today, and especially since I know um, in, in more depth the AAA project, uh, those should be a part of, uh, of the financing, let's say, part of the banks or the other investors so as to uh, monitor and evaluate better this credit risk that probably an investment related to buildings has. At the other, we have the performance risks. And this is, again, uh, related to buildings. And when we're talking about the, uh, the performance risk, it's um, uh, concerning about the repayment, which in many cases depends on the energy saving achievements. 
Um, so mostly when the actual savings are not sufficient to repay the investment. In this case, the performance risk is associated with savings being generated either from a project that are not typically known to financial institutions and probably the results also from the non or the limited availability of tools that could safeguard, let's say, somehow the decisions of the financial institutions. So, Alice, you say, uh, just uh, uh, let me know if I got this right, that it's, it's like, you know, the traditional uh, real estate investment, but we have to account for the energy saving, right, which is, a, which is an important yes. part. But the yes. main instrument from the, from the investment perspective are like a regular, uh, you know, a classical real estate in investment exactly. for the financial mm -hmm. risks and so on, but you account for some savings benefits from the energy efficiency. Yes, so we are, we are, I get it right or not? Yes, that's right. When uh, when uh, we are now discussing about carbon neutrality, and this is the aim of the uh, European Union to be the first um, carbon neutral continent by 2050. Uh, we need to consider the bad quality of the majority. Um, 70% of buildings in the EU are not performing well. And buildings are the worst, let's say, energy consumers. So we need to consider also the energy efficiency and the sustainability aspect of buildings as part of an investment. Uh, otherwise, for me, and this is my personal opinion, but also the opinion of uh, some fora that I'm participating, is that uh, without an energy efficient building stock, which will be there and still be standing for the next 50 or 60 years, and consider also that we are spending 90% of our lives inside the building. So we need to consider also the energy efficiency, sorry, and sustainability aspects, uh, aspect when we're taking decisions about financing uh, projects that are related to buildings, either building a new one or innovating. So this is definitely part of an investment. So yes, uh, the risks are there. It's the credit risks, it's the performance risk, so the, um, the financiers and those that they are providing money for, um, for this uh, category of um, investment, they need also to consider um, the energy efficiency aspect as well. Okay, clear enough. I mean, I, I also know, um, I've, I've, I've read that this problem is also severe in, uh, in uh, big US cities like New York, okay? a lot of corporate buildings and many of them are, are, are old, right? All these skyscrapers, some of the skyscrapers. We yeah, see yeah, are, exactly. Are really exactly. old and they're not, they're not performing well from the energy part. So having said that, I don't, we don't have so much time, so, but I want to, I want to, uh, um, uh, I would like to ask, uh, you know, um, um, Richard, the quick uh, question, and then, you know, we can go to Philip and wrap up, which is, you know, about the risks. Can I, can I trust your uh, uh, recommender? That's the question, you know, which is trending. Especially in the EU, we have the the AI regulation. I don't know if uh, UK is gonna is gonna follow this, but we have the the AI regulation. When an AI system uh, takes critical decision, it has to be transparent. It has to be um, you know uh, white glass uh, and so on. So the question is, can I can I really trust your 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 um, uh, recommendations, or it's a matter of religion to to follow them because, um, you know, the robots say so. Yes, <laughs> it's like all, all hail the algorithm. Um, no, the, um, so this is the other, this is where it kind of leads into sort of the, the challenges or the, the dark side of modern technologies. So one of the things that like with the advance of AI technologies, these models have become far more complex um, than we'd pre that we've previously been possible. This has brought us great power, but it has also brought us great challenges in terms of trying to understand what these models are doing and what are the key factors that are going into the recommendations that they make. This is just one of the core challenges and this hasn't been fully solved yet. Um, part of this or part of the solution to this is making our AI models more explainable, um, either inherently, so this might be building models in such a way that effectively there are um, action points within the network that we can use to try and tease apart what the model is actually doing when it is making a decision, or alternatively, having surrounding systems that are effectively trying to explain what the system is doing based on the input and the main weights of the system. 
Um, the other side of this is then looking at what sort of biases are these systems learning? Um, because at the end of the day, these systems are not like humans. They are they are given an objective function, which is some kind of easy to measure thing, which it is trying to optimize. And through optimizing this factor, it may learn things that you don't want it to know or you don't want it to factor in, right? In many, we've, there's been a lot of discussion on fairness in AI, where it's looking at, okay, is this biasing against particular ethnic groups? Um, I think what we're looking more in kind of like the finance domain is what is the downstream impact of learning from this past data? Are we learning that people should be investing in how to exploit third world countries would be the equivalent of your know, kind of problem in the financial space. To take a more recent example, let's say we have a great um, AI model that has learned how the energy markets work around the world, right? They, it detects that you know, Russia is looking to invade Ukraine. What, do this, what does it take from that? It learns that, okay, there's going to be you know, limited supply in Europe for oil. So should you now be taking your investments out of Russian oil, oil producers, producers and then investing in Saudi Arabia? That might be a great investment choice from just a money-making perspective, but is that something that we want our model to actually learn? given the other potential challenges from a social or you know democratic perspective in that country right or should we be you know, should our model be trying to learn social factors like well maybe we should be trying to promote green energy and so instead of you know investing your money in more oil producing companies maybe you should be putting it into green energy or these kind of things the challenge there though is to enable our models to learn that we need to have training examples and we need to have objective functions that allow our models to take into account these other soft factors. Um, so we need to be able to move from a paradigm where we're just looking at profit to where these models are able to you know, factor in all of these other soft factors um, that we care about as humans and are important to make sure that what we're doing is sustainable for the long term. Thank you, Richard. That that, that uh, makes sense, right? And connect also the first intervention. We have very limited time. I'd like to invite uh, you know uh, Nikos and Alice to just give a closing statement of for for for, for the day. I don't want to do this, and then I'll give the floor back to Philip for the for the wrap up and maybe for reading the uh, the, the the recommendations for um, of 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 our missing uh, panelists. So Nikos, Alice. One quick statement. We are we're really, you know, at the at the end of the workshop. Okay. I can do first. I don't know. Nico's okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, so um, as a final statement, what I can say is that we need to increase the attractiveness of energy efficiency. And um, considering that this is an investment proposition, depending definitely on the environment in which the project arise. And also it is being influenced by a number of different factors. So we need to work towards the policy environment, the energy market structure, the existence of suitable supply chains for energy efficiency projects. And this can be only done uh, when you have, uh, let's say, uh, um, stakeholders that they are looking in strengthening uh, the policy environment and also the energy market structure. Uh, as I said in my previous statement, this is very well connected, the whole investment area with the buildings as well. So if you want to, um, to move towards a more sustainable world, a more sustainable world, which is with a more sustainable financing, let's say, we need to consider a lot of factors that need to be redesigned, rescheduled, and um, rephrased in some of the cases in order to have, let's say, the desired approach and desired um, outcome. Thank you, Alice Nico. Statement. My statement is that, uh, uh, if I can follow up uh, what Alice uh, said, uh, I want, uh, I wish that we were going to, to to leave apart guidelines and go to regulations. So uh, basically, on energy efficiency, on uh, sustainability, on ESG and taxonomy. 
Uh, I think that the European uh, Committee, the, the, the European decision uh, makers, uh, they are going all, to, all, all the time further and further the time for decisions, the moment, uh, the point for decisions. Uh, and, the, and what we face, the basic uh, uh, difficulty that we face on uh, energy efficiency, environmental policy, uh, sustainability policy is that when something is not obligatory or it's not obvious when it will be obligatory, uh, there is not a strong incentive to uh, implement uh, the proper policies. So this is uh, my, I think my strong point and my wish. So no more delays, uh, the future is now, let's act now, right? Okay. Thank you, yes. Nicholas. thank you, Alice, thank you, Richard, and thanks everybody for joining today. I hope you really enjoyed this, this content. I think the, the presentations from, the, from both projects were very tangible and very uh, good quality with demonstrations. Philippe, the floor is yours for the closing from AAA. And uh, yes, that's it. Hello. Thank you very much. For me again. Uh, I would uh, like to say once more that the uh, Saba has been in the meeting this whole time, but unfortunately, in the last minute, he had to leave. So he sent me an email with some uh, recommendations. So uh, as he mentions, the big issue in funding energy efficiency is that many projects are borderline from a return standpoint, and uh, they have long maturities, which in general would be excluding factors for funding. Also, by applying... Uh, a tried and tested method in the U.S. municipal market, uh, capital markets to make the cap on or interest payment tax-free could uh, <clears throat> this could on the one hand reduce the interest rate uh, which would be needed for funding a given project and at the tax rate of 20 percent this is a difference between four and five percent interest rate needing to be paid which in return could be the difference between a go and no-go no decision. Uh, as uh, any more projects would get financed, the additional VAT uh, and additional employee tax contributions would easily compensate the shortfall resulting from the tax-free status on the green bonds. By allowing, uh, tax, uh, by allowing these tax-free statuses, in particular in the crowdfunding sector and up to 5 million euro transactions, which under the latest EU directives will make the crowdfunding market more efficient across Europe. It has been shown that demand for green investment is a very much growing arena. It has been shown that the local investors, um, the local investors are more apt to support local projects, thus aligning the local investor with local projects would, uh, which he could directly benefit of. Last but not least, deep renovations, which are a must, would be easy to execute like this, and this would contribute to the EU objectives of reducing energy dependence and to retrofit 3% of the building stock annually to achieve the 2050 objectives. This has been the remarks from Mr. Chaba. I hope uh, I had been clear because I was reading it. It was a last minute email. Thank you, Philippe. It, uh, it is really interesting, right? And it also relates to the things we've seen in the workshop, because if they are really marginal, then, you know, the risk assessment becomes uh, critical, right? I mean, the, uh, for the go-no-go -no -go, uh, decision. So, um, yeah, I think we can stop the recording. Uh, just to say the, thanks for everybody participating. I think we can, uh, you know, distribute the recording via the YouTube channels of the both projects. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.